This video is brought to you by Pitaka. Today, we're comparing the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra versus the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, I've extensively used each of these phones, and today we're gonna be talking about the key similarities as well as the differences between these two great phones to ultimately help you decide which of the two is right for you. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. Right, so in terms of price, the S24 Ultra and the 15 Pro Max both start with 256 gigabytes of storage, but the Ultra is, however, $100 more expensive, coming in at $1,299 versus $1,199 on the Pro Max. Never thought I'd see the day. Both phones use a titanium and glass design for a premium look, and this is to match their premium price. Uh, the Galaxy has a more boxy design, where I would say the iPhone has a more smooth and rounded design, which to me looks just a touch more refined. In the hand, I also found the 15 Pro Max to be more comfortable to use and hold. It is slightly lighter, uh, not as tall, and it has rounded corners as opposed to the uh, more sharper corners that you get on the Ultra, which can sometimes dig into your palm during periods of longer use, uh, and you don't get this on the 15 Pro Max. Now, these are both large phones, but thanks to its design, the 15 Pro Max feels just a little bit less large uh, and thus more comfortable to use. On the back though, I do prefer Samsung's approach to the camera module uh, since they have a metal ring going around the lenses that is actually slightly raised to protect them from surfaces. And this I think is a really smart design element. Now both phones are also IP68 water resistant, so you don't have to worry about using them in the rain. Ultimately, these are both good looking and well made phones, but if I had to choose one, I would say I do prefer the design and especially the feel in the hand of the 15 Pro Max. But things are different when we look at the displays. Now the S24 Ultra has a 6.8 inch display, which is gonna be a little bit larger than the 15 Pro Max's 6.7 inch display. Now the Ultra's display is also 10% sharper and more importantly, is up to 30% brighter. And this is a difference that you do notice when out in the sun. But my favorite feature of the display of the Ultra is that it shows up to 75% less reflection. So you can see even in this shot, uh, this studio light right here is much less noticeable in the Ultra uh, than it is on the 15 Pro Max. And this really makes a big difference. And when you compare it to the 15 Pro Max, it is night and day. And what this ultimately means uh, is that on the S24 Ultra, the display is just much more pleasant to use outdoors. And then when you're indoors, the lack of reflections just mean that content feels more immersive. Additionally, the display on the Ultra is also far more scratch resistant, and this I think is great to see since, in my opinion, uh, Samsung's previous phones and also the 15 Pro Max for that matter, scratch way too easily. You'll always hear me talk about uh, screen protectors in my videos, but for the first time on the 24 Ultra, uh, you may actually not need one. In fact, so far, after a couple weeks of use, I have zero scratches on my display, so this is an upgrade I very much welcome. All this is not to say that the display on the 15 Pro Max is not great. The Pro Max's display is also an OLED. Uh, it also has a 1 to 120 Hz adaptable refresh rate. And in fact, I actually prefer the more true to life color profile of the Pro Max's display. And this makes it ideal for photo and video editing. But in all other areas, the display on the S24 Ultra is just even better. And therefore the Ultra takes this category. Something you will only find on the S24 Ultra is the S Pen, which remains to be the best implementation of a stylus on any phone. Now, I don't use it as much uh, as some others do. I do find it to be a great way to quickly take a note on my screen or even write in my calendar. Another big difference between the two phones is the approach to the front camera, where the 15 Pro Max has the dynamic island, which is a great way to quickly see app info at a glance or switch between open apps. But of course, this does take up more screen space than the punch hole camera on the S24 Ultra. But the dynamic island does enable Face ID, which remains to be the most reliable face unlock in any phone. At the same time though, Samsung's underscreen Ultra ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is great too. Ultimately, both allow for fast and secure authentication, therefore this category is a tie. And now we get to my favorite part of any smartphone comparison, the cameras. Let's take a look at some real world examples taken straight from camera with no settings changed exactly how each manufacturer intended it. Starting with the main lens, the most important lens, since this is the one you'll likely end up using the most. The 15 Pro Max's 50 megapixel sensor is slightly sharper than the Ultra's 200 megapixel sensor capturing at the default 50 megapixels. The Pro Max also has a bit better dynamic range, keeping more detail in the darker parts of the image. I also found the Pro Max to have a more accurate color profile compared to the Ultra's more vibrant look. In most cases, I do prefer the more true to life image of the 15 Pro Max, but in some cases, the Ultra creates a more lively image, and in this video, I must say, these snacks look more delicious on the S24. 
when it comes to white balance, uh, the 15 Pro Max does a better job in most cases. It is more consistent. Uh, where on the Ultra, it sometimes requires me to move the camera a bit to adjust and then correctly set the white balance. However, when we switch to the telephoto lenses, things change. Here, the Ultra has the advantage of having both a 5X and a 3X lens compared to the Pro Max's single 5X lens. In this portrait shot of me walking, the Ultra produced a significantly better image compared to the Pro Max in terms of colors as well as detail. In fact, even at 10X zoom, the Ultra outperforms the Pro Max with better sharpness. The ultra wide lenses, I would say, are most similar, both amongst the best I've seen with good detail and minimal distortion. For the selfie camera, I slightly prefer the Ultra. The image is a touch sharper and has more depth, but can be on the warm side. When it comes to video, the Pro Max is still king. Video on the iPhone shows more accurate skin tones, is sharper, and also less noisy. However, the Ultra does have a more shallow depth of field. The Pro Max also more smoothly adjusts to changes in exposure while filming, producing video more akin to that of a proper camera. Now throughout this camera comparison, you'll often hear me say slightly or a bit, and that is because both camera systems here really are excellent, and the differences between them seem to only get smaller each year. My ideal smartphone camera would consist of the main lens and the video of the Pro Max with the telephoto and the front lens of the Ultra, but if I had to choose one between the two, the 15 Pro Max still has the edge and therefore wins this category. Before we talk about battery performance as well as operating system, let me show you this fantastic line of Aramid fiber accessories from Pitaka. This is the Maggie's Case 4 and Maggie's Case 5, and here are my three favorite features of this case. First is you get that caseless feel while still adding protection from day-to-day -day wear, and this is thanks to the fact that the Maggie's cases are made from a durable aramid fiber, allowing for a super thin and lightweight design which on larger phones like this is especially handy. And second, I really like the broad range of designs that the Maggie's case comes in. So we got the sleek and timeless gray and black design, uh, but then for some color, you also get the sunset and moonrise designs, which capture the skies during a twilight, where the color is literally woven into the aramid fiber, and this creates a really nice texture uh, through a process called fusion weaving that just feels so nice to hold. And third, the Maggie's cases are also fully MagSafe compatible, and this also means this will bring MagSafe functionality to your Galaxy phone, letting you add accessories like, for example, the MagEase Grip 2, which of course instantly attaches, uh, will add grip to your phone, and can also fold out to let you watch videos on the go. And I especially like how well this accessory pairs with the design of the case. Pitaka also have the equally stylish Car Mount Pro 2, and this lets you seamlessly mount and charge your phone at up to 15 watts. The Maggie's Case 4 and 5 add slim and stylish protection to your S24 Ultra and your 15 Pro Max, and to learn more, be sure to head to the links in the description. Aside from the display, the other main reason I love using larger phones like this is of course the battery life, and thankfully both the S24 Ultra and the 15 Pro Max deliver equally strong battery life with around 9 hours of screen on time, easily lasting me all day with around 30-40% remaining, something I absolutely love to see. The S24, however, does charge faster, going up to 45 watts compared to 27 watts on the Pro Max, and can also reverse charge things like your Galaxy Buds, which can be very handy on the go. Uh, at the same time, though, the Pro Max does have MagSafe, and this will let you magnetically wirelessly charge and also add accessories like wallets and stands. I'd say both phones offer best-in-class battery life, and each has their own unique features when it comes to charging, so both win in this category, making it a tie. For well over $1,000, I expect top of the line performance, and thankfully, that is what both phones deliver. So the S24 Ultra comes with Samsung's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip, no matter in which region you buy, unlike the regular S24, uh, and then the 15 Pro Max packs Apple's latest A17 Pro chip. Now, technically speaking, the Pro Max has a little bit more CPU power, and then the Ultra has a little bit more GPU power, but what matters is, in the real world, these are probably, if not the most, powerful phones you can buy today. And no matter what I do, from day-to-day -day tasks, video calls, games, photo editing, I never feel like I'm pushing either phone to its limits, and feel like there's still plenty of headroom for future updates, features, as well as apps. But using the phone side by side, the experience on the 15 Pro Max is ultimately still more smooth overall. And this is thanks to the fact that on the iPhone, Apple make both the hardware as well as the software. And this allows for a level of unmatched integration and optimization that when you're using the phone, you do feel. Where on the Ultra, while not often, there will still be the occasional stutter. However, I have noticed that apps do stay open for longer on the Ultra, and I think this is because uh, it does have more RAM, but ultimately, thanks to its truly unmatched level of optimization and fluid operation, the Pro Max just takes this category. 
But how long will these phones last? Well, for the Ultra, Samsung promises an impressive up to seven years of software support, which is longer than the six years I would expect the 15 Pro Max to get. Now, it is worth noting that when it comes to value retentions, iPhones do typically hold their value significantly better than Android phones, including Galaxy phones, meaning you will get more money back if you choose to sell in the future and upgrade. However, the S24 Ultra, with its impressive seven years of software support, ultimately takes this category. I want to briefly compare the operating systems as this too is a key part of each phone and is also an area where they greatly differ. Android with One UI on the S24 Ultra offers so many features, some truly great and others more gimmicky. Android also has near endless customization options so you can set up your phone to run almost exactly how you want it. And Samsung have also added some really neat AI features. For example, circle to search, which lets you look up anything on screen. And in photos, you can generate, fill, move, and remove objects. While not perfect, these forward-thinking features make iOS on the Pro Max feel a bit plain. But what makes iOS so special is its level of polish and ease of use. There's no multiple apps for the same function, uh, no useless bells and whistles taking up storage, and the features that it does offer are generally really well thought out. Quality over quantity iOS also integrates so well into the Apple ecosystem, from iMessage to the Apple Watch and your Mac. Apple does this like no other. I think both operating systems are highly capable and each have their own unique strength. This category is a tie since this decision really comes down to personal preference. And this brings us to the verdict. So which phone is best? Well, if we take a look at all the categories that we explore today, we can see that overall the iPhone does pull ahead in more categories, but at the same time though, they do also tie quite often and each phone does have its own unique advantages. My advice would be to look at the areas we explore today, choose which matter most to you, and then see which phone best aligns with your priorities. For me, as a content creator uh, who is in the Apple ecosystem and who uses my phone for both work as well as personal use, reliability is key. And that is why for me, ultimately, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is going to be the better choice. But I really enjoyed my time with the S24 Ultra. And I gotta say, every year I find myself more and more impressed and pulled towards the Galaxy line. And this makes me really excited to see the future of what both these companies have to offer. Let me know if you have any questions at all and be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. If you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my Galaxy S24 Ultra and my 15 Pro Max first things to do videos to help you get the most out of these great phones. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.